Have we seen the end of the fallout from CFI platforms like Voyager and Celsius, or is there still some fallout to see in the DeFi space with Curve, Compound, Uniswap, Aave, for example? That's what we're talking about today. If you guys are interested, I encourage you to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and check out the CT Club down below in the video description where we give you our take on the market, portfolio updates, trade alerts, what we're doing with our cryptos during this turbulent time in the markets and you can ask questions like this and it might turn into a video like we have today. So today I'm answering the question, can the fallout from CFI platforms affect DeFi platforms? Is there still, like, should we still be paranoid to see more cascade and contagion uh, of, of over leveraged players in the cryptocurrency space? Now, first of all, it's very important to point out the, the basic differences between these two uh, platforms, CFI and DeFi. They're definitely confused a lot, especially in the media, especially in mainstream media. They're calling Celsius DeFi. That's a mess. So first and foremost, uh, I'm asked a lot, how can I tell if it's a centralized platform or not? Number one, if you are creating an account and all you need is a, an email and a password, and then you, your account is created, and then you can start depositing cryptocurrencies onto it, the reason you can deposit cryptocurrency so quick and easy is because that platform is the one who has already initiated and generated a private key for the wallet that you will be depositing coins into. You did not get access to a seed phrase. It is not your private keys. It is not your coins. Whatever you deposit onto that account you just created is going into the wallet of someone else. And uh, with DeFi, for example, let's say you go onto Aave and you want to start lending on Aave. The first thing they're going to ask you to do is to connect a wallet. Most likely it's going to be MetaMask because this is the most user friendly, the most widely integrated Web3 wallet. Um, if you do use MetaMask, I highly recommend that you first connect through your ledger to MetaMask to Aave just to have as much levels of security as possible. Um, so that's your, your number one clue if it's centralized or decentralized at the very least that is custodial versus non-custodial. Uh, Celsius, Voyager, BlockFi are custodial centralized lending platforms and uh, DeFi as an Aave, Uniswap, Compound, Curve, Maker, these are all uh, non-custodial, more decentralized is probably not perfectly decentralized, but still you are in full control over your cryptocurrencies. The second difference here is how centralized finance platforms like C Celsius, Voyager, BlockFi, how are they generating the profits that they're being paid to you, that they're promising you, what, between five and 10% usually? Where is that five or 10% profit coming from? ideally and the way that they explain it to you in their terms of service is basically that you are the lender depositing your coins they take your coins and they lend them to other players in the game whether it's retail or institutional investors they lend your coins to them those borrowers pay a high interest rate and you get the trickle down profits from that the reality is you have given your cryptocurrency to someone else. They are doing whatever they want or whatever they can with that cryptocurrency to generate more profits to pay out all the people who are coming to their platform for those profits that they were promised. Um, a lot of these CFI platforms have been caught using other lending platforms like Anchor Protocol and UST. It's one reason why a lot of them got wiped out when UST depegged. Um, another one was using... Uh, uh, staked Ethereum, uh, so they were staking Ethereum and using that uh, staked profit, those staking rewards, to pay out their, their users. And another one they were using was an arbitrage opportunity previously allotted to them through GBTC, Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust. Um, none of those three options were have anything to do with direct lending, and all of them were the activities on a lot of these big CFI platforms. Here's the difference between DeFi, again, like Maker, Curve, Aave, for example. Um, they are purely lender and borrower because when you deposit coins onto these decentralized platforms, you're depositing them onto a smart contract, not into a wall that someone else has control over. It's a smart contract. If you guys wanna learn more what a smart contract is and how to tell if a DeFi platform has secure audited smart contracts, I please 
check out the links for the videos down below. I've done a lot of safety videos in that regard. Um, but so basically, DeFi is purely lending, purely a borrower lender uh, situation. But how these DeFi platforms have tried to be competitive with CeFi or just to be competitive against each other and offer higher rewards, a lot of these DeFi platforms will uh, create or use their native token to uh, basically incentivize new users. So Aave has their Aave token, Curve has their CRV DAO token, uh, and they can be doled out as rewards for those who are lending. And so that's kind of their secondary incentive mechanism to facilitate a higher return. Um, additionally, DeFi usually has a much higher collateral level. So in case those that are borrowing can't pay it back or default on the loan, not only are the lenders made whole, but there's still enough in the tank in that smart contract to facilitate other activities as well. DeFi by far is, in my opinion, a better philosophically a better alternative to CFI because it is trustless, permissionless, uh, non-custodial, more decentralized options than things like Celsius or BlockFi. Uh, there's lots of ways that, that DeFi can also be exploited. With DeFi, there's lots of insurance protocols that do pay out, that are successful. I will be doing a video on that. I've been planning to do that for a while. Now that we're in a nice healthy bear market and everyone's interested in learning more about what makes cryptocurrency valuable, how you can avoid scams. I think insurance is a great way to do that as well. So stay tuned for that upcoming video. Um, I'll be publishing it uh, very soon. But anyway, I hope this uh, answered your question. Hope, I hope that those who are watching have found it to be informative. If you did, please hit the like button, hit subscribe. I'll see you again soon. Bye guys.